So thank you, uh, Professor Moti. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, first of all, I would like to say, thank the organizer for the kind invitation. And in the next 15 minutes, we are going to review the role of checkpoint inhibitors in multiple myeloma. So first of all, a immune system, our immune system is capable of controlling a cancer and this is a complex multi-step process that needs first the release of cancer cell antigens after a tumor cell death and these antigens are going to be processed and presented by antigen presenting cells to T cells and once these T cells are prime and activated they are going to travel to the tumor site where they are going to build the immune response. Unfortunately, tumors can display a variety of mechanisms that allow them to evade the immune control, and multiple myeloma is one example of impaired immune surveillance, and the, the, the mechanism underlying this impaired immune surveillance are the ones shown in the slide. So first, there is an impaired induction of allogenic T cell responses in multiple myeloma patients, based in part due to a reduced number of CD4 T cell, and also an abnormal normal TH1, TH2 cytokine profile. There is also a reduce in the B cell compartment and an impaired antibody response, and also a reduced expression of tumor antigens and also HLA co-stimulatory molecules, leading to inadequate T cell co-stimulation. Furthermore, multiple myeloma cells express higher levels of inhibitory ligands, such as PDL1, that will mediate energy and T cell exhaustion, and also stromal cells, bicromarial cells, uh, produce chemokines that will promote the invasion of immune suppressive cell populations like myeloid suppressor cells and T-Rex. So it is clear that immune system is impaired in multiple myeloma, and now let me share with you some data from our groups that clearly illustrates the importance of immune system in controlling disease evolution. The first model I would like to take is smaller in multiple myeloma, and the key to this trial, high-risk smaller in multiple myeloma patients already have an impaired immune system. There were shown decreased expression of activation, TH1, and proliferation-related markers. And after the treatment with lenalidomide, dexamethasone, this expression was restored, and also, and also there was induced a shift in T cell and NK cell phenotype. Other model I would like to uh, uh, share with you is the, import, the, the status of the immune system in long-term multiple myeloma survivors that are patients that survive more than 10 years free from a disease, and these patients have unique immune profile with higher number of effector cells and lower number of T-Rex, uh, suggesting an improved immune surveillance. Furthermore, if we use eight color flow for assessing MRD, we can distinguish three groups of patients based on a different immune profile with different outcomes. Patients that have better recovery of B cell compartment and also better neutrophil production have the better outcome, these patients in the blue curve, and also if we focus on MRD positive patients. Those patients that were MRD positive and have this unique immune profile have similar outcome than patients being MRD negative. So it is clear, clear immune system is important in, treated, in treating cancer patients. And these are the four ways, the four strategies in which we can improve immune system and, uh, against tumors. And today we are going to focus in checkpoint inhibitors that are drugs that will overcome the immune suppression built by the tumor. So first of all, we need to understand how a T cell is activated. So for a T cell to be active, there is a need for a two signal. The first one will be the recognition of the antigen by the TCR. The antigen needs to be presented in an MHC class uh, complex, either by the tumor cell or by an antigen presenting cell. And the second signal is the call, uh, the co-stimulatory signal, and this signal is needed for the activation of the T cell. In the absence of this co-stimulatory signal, T cells fail to respond and become inactivated. 
Okay, so these co-stimulatory receptor or these checkpoint receptors are important in physiological conditions to maintain self-tolerance and also to protect the tissues from damage. We can have activated re activating receptors that they are going to switch on the T cell and we can have also inhibitory receptors and we can use agonist antibodies against activating receptors and we are going to press the gas in the immune response and we can also use blocking antibodies against inhibitory receptor and we are going to release the break of the T cell in order to amplify the T cell response. So far, we have three different checkpoint inhibitors. They are all drugs acting against inhibitory receptors. So we have CTL4, sorry, CTL4 inhibitors, PD-1 and PDL1 inhibitors. And first, we are going to start by with CTL4 inhibitors that were the first developed in the clinic, and the first was epilimumab that has been approved already for the treatment of melanoma and also non-small lung cell cancer patients based on a larger phase three trials. So epilimumab is an antibody against CTLL4 that is an inhibitory receptor that is expressed on the surface of activated T cells and also T-Rex and its ligands are CD80 and CD86. When CTLL4 binds to its ligands, there is an inhibition in the T cell activation and the physiological function of CTLL4 is to regulate the T cell activity at the beginning of the immune response. On the other hand, we have PD-1 inhibitor, so PD-1 again is an inhibitory receptor that is expressed on the surface of activated cells. Its ligands are PDL1 and PDL2 that are expressed both in APC and tumor cells. And when PD-1 binds to its ligands, there is also an inhibition of the T cell response, and uh, the function of PD-1 is to limit the activity of the activated T cells once the immune system is already on going. So cancer cells use this pathway, PD-1, PDL1 pathway, to create an immune suppressive milieu. And this is in part uh, due to an upregulation of the ligand of the PDL1 in the tumor cell. This has been already shown in different types of tumors, melanoma, multiple myeloma, non-small cell lung cancer, and on others, and is also linked to a worse outcome. And also there is an increased expression of PD-1 in tumor infiltrated lymphocytes, in part related to a mm, secretion of the tumor microenvironment of pro-inflammatory cytokines, like for example interferon gamma, that upregulate the PD-1 in the lymphocytes. So we are going to have a lot of PD-L1 in the tumor cell and a lot of PD-1 in the lymphocytes surrounding the, the tumor cell, and these lymphocytes are going to be inactivated. What about clinical data on PD-1 blockade and hematological malignancy? So these are the result of the phase one trial using nivolumab, single agent. Overall response rate around 40% in lymphoma patients, both diffuse large B cell and follicular lymphoma, and impressive 87% overall response rate in heavily pretreated Hodgkin disease patients. What about PD-1 inhibition in multiple myeloma? So first of all, we need to say that PD-L1 expression is increased in clonal selective um, plasma cells all along the disease, but more the, the, the levels of expression are higher in multiple myeloma patients with MRG positivity and also at the moment at relapse. And this is also true for the levels of PD-1 in the lymphocytes of these patients. In a mouse model using PD-1 blockade, the survival was prolonged and the results of nivolumab single agent in the same phase trial only showed a stabilization of the disease. So it looks like this treatment needs to be in combination at least in multiple myeloma patients. And one partner of this checkpot blockade will be the image. And this is in vitro data from Kenneth Anderson group showing that lenalidomide reduced PD-1 and PD-L1 expression in relapsed refractory multiple myeloma cells and also a clear synergistic effect of the combination. 
So uh, last TASH meeting were presented two trials uh, of pembrolizumab, that is a, another PD-1 inhibitor in combination with EMIT. So this is the first trial that was presented uh, on, pe sorry, on pembrolizumab in combination with lenalidomide and low dox desamethasone in a patient population of relapsed refractory multiple myeloma patients having received more than two prior lines exposed to PIs and imits. This is the design of the trial. The maximum tolerated dose was pembrolizumab, 200 milligrams every other week in combination with a standard dose of lenalidomide dexamethasone. And these are the baseline characteristic of the patient based on prior lines of therapy median number of four prior lines, 76% of the patients were refractory to lenalidomide, and among these patients, 50% were either double, triple, or quadruple refractory, and 80% were refractory to the last line of therapy. These are the efficacy data that are still very preliminary but indeed encouraging with a 76% overall response rate in the total population and 56% in those patients that were lenalidomide refractory. With a median follow-up of 296 days, the median duration of response were 10 months with quite rapid responses, median 1.2 months, and 11% of the patient upgraded the quality of the response during the treatment. Regarding safety, the adverse events were consistent to the profile of each drug and uh, may be underestimated due to limited drug exposure, but there were, this, it seems to be a tolerable combination. N a, a lower incidence of immune-related events, there are uh, some uh, is uh, related to this type of uh, therapies without any cases of pneumonitis or colitis that were reported so far. And now let's move to the POMDEX uh, combination. This is the schedule, the treatment schema, similar to the one from lenalidomide, dexamethasone, 200 milligram pembrolizumab every other week, same patient population, baseline characteristic are uh, a review here, 82% of the patients were refractory to PIs, 89% refractory to lenalidomide, and 70% double refractory. Really, uh, regarding safety profile, there was an increased risk of pneumonia in this trial, and also 10% risk of pneumonitis and hepatitis, but uh, overall the combination was tolerable. And these are the responses. Overall response rate in the 27 patients, 60%, regarding patients that were double refractory uh, and encouraging 55% overall response rate. So in conclusion, we can say that these combinations with pembrolizumab and imits are overall tolerable with an adequate safety profile and with promising activity, although the data is still immature. What about the correlation about the expression of PDL1 and the response? So, although there is an effort uh, trying to search for biomarkers, so far there is no association between the expression of PDL1 and the response, at least in solid tumors, not yet uh, data in multiple myeloma. And although still immature, these are very encouraging data, but it looks like there, these treatments won't be used as single agent, but more likely to be used in combination. And as you can see, some of these combinations are quite complex. And this is all for my part, and I thank you all for your attention.